Yo guys, welcome back to yet another guide on rotation or gank, whatever you want to call it. Today we're going to talk about Hayabusa. Hayabusa is a unique assassin with very unique mechanics and unique playstyles. Did I use too many unique? Well, he's different than any other assassins like Saber or Karina, who either has a very strong single target quad control ability or building percentage HP shred ability. Hyper doesn't have that, you know, he doesn't have really crowd control abilities and his early game damage not very impressive either. Well, um, wait, wh why were we talking about this piece of garbage again? <laughs> no, no, actually, Hayabusa in the current meta is either banned or picked every single high elo game. And there are so many solid reasons for that. And in this rotation guide video, you will find out exactly why and maybe fall in love with Hayabusa yourself. Because if played correctly, Hayabusa is the single strongest assassin or even just single strongest champion in the entire game. So like any other guy, we're gonna break this guy into four categories. When to rotate, how to rotate, how to counter gank, and team fight strategies. Hayabusa's rotation is very unique. Before level 8, your rotation is mainly restricted to jungle and your mid lane. So, you're not even gonna gank after level 4? You may ask. Well, the answer is, is where is situational? Because of Hayabusa's lack of quad control and damage before level 8 on your first or just before your first AD item, you really don't do much when you gank other, other lanes besides throwing a Phantom Shuriken around. So, the job, the job early on is to get to level 8 as soon as possible for your level 2 ultimate. Preferably before everyone else, and start to establish your map dominance from that point. And when I say your gank before level 8 is situational, now in what situation should you gank? If you finish your mid lane wave and you notice a side lane are pushed close to your turret, and the enemy are below half HP, go for it. You might be able to pick up an easy kill here and there just by catching them off guard. So, let's talk about how to rotate, how to effectively rotate from jungle to lane in early game. Now at level 1, you want to force the wave clearing by using your Phantom Shirk in your first ability on the minute wave twice in combination with your auto attack. Right after that, you want to walk through your mid lane river bush towards the side bush next to the enemy blue buff. Since you're level 2 in the retribution, you should be able to secure the enemy blue buff more easily or fairly easily if they're cleaning the jungle camp first. Now, if you walk over to the bush and find out enemy bot lane are still a lane, uh, they decide to go to lane first and then come back to jungle, you want to drop the invade and go to your small camp on the right side of your mid tower instead to save time and immediately walk through the same bushes to enemy blue to see if you can catch it. Now, if you miss it, don't worry, just go back to your own blue if you still have it. If you do not, kindly ask your team to give the blue buff to you next time. After level 4, you want to set your second ability with one shadow back in your tier 1 tower and one shadow close to the mid wave, basically parallel to your mid lane. And then jump in to use your ultimate to clean the wave. And then immediately dash back, then rotate back to the jungle to farm. Try to avoid unnecessary trading with enemy mid laner, so you can keep your HP bar to maintain your safe and healthy farming rotation. Once you do gank side lane, Either when you spot an opportunity or when you're confident enough that you can secure a kill, make sure you always jump in with your second ability so you can always have a way out of things when you know when things go south or due to unexpected reasons, right? So in the early game, majority of your damage comes from your first ability. Only if you hit three of your shurikens onto the same target. Now, so position your second ability to make a hit onto the fleeing enemy is extremely crucial to the success of a gank. And some tips here are, if you're ganking an enemy who is in the middle of his wave, for example, do not initiate with your ultimate. Dash in with your second ability, uh, make sure you hit that onto the enemy, of course, and then, and then add your first ability and auto attack. Uh, just keep on doing that until the person is ready to flee. Or if you're low, for example, uh, until the person is going to commit to you and you try to run away. You, but when you're not really running away, you are just leading them away from the wave. And then you use your ultimate. Right to get it to get an easy kill. Right, um, make sure you use your ultimate. If they're not in most situations, if their HP drop to one third and one fourth when you're just trading them with all attack and first ability, first ability, um, active your ultimate can definitely secure a very very easy kill and, and a sure kill. Right.
So, let's talk about how to counter gank. Sometimes when you farm the mid wave, you might come to the down downtime of your all being on cooldown. So, you might have to walk close to the minion wave and rely on your first ability and auto attack to clean the wave. If this is the case, make sure you pay special attention to the minimap. If you can't find enemy side laners, uh, chances are they are coming to gank you. You know, come to whoop your ass. So, this is what you do, right? Scream extremely loud and make sure you panic. <laughs> no, no, that's just kidding. Don't do that. Make sure you send your second ability out towards your tier one tower and quickly auto and you auto attack and use your first ability to clean the wave. When the situation goes out or your second ability timer runs out, for example, dash back immediately to protect yourself from harm's way. Sometimes giving up on a range minion may just save your life. So you can go home and then go back to the loving girlfriend or mistress that you have, or if you're a girl, go back to the boyfriend or or mister. Right, I mean, do I see that right? I mean, anyways, the core principle is to make sure you have a way out. Let's talk about teamfight strategies. Now, I want to talk about teamfight strategies in this guide because I get so many complaints from lots of new high boost players saying high boost is completely useless in a teamfight. Now, that cannot be further away from the truth. Most of the time, sorry for yelling, but most of the time it's just because they're not using it correctly. So this is what you do, okay? When team fight breaks off, be patient and wait for the enemy backline to show themselves. Position your second ability to have one shadow hit their backliner and an enemy close to the backline or enemy close to the backline. So basically you have a shadow hit. Don't hit your shadow just, you know, randomly onto their front line. No, save it and try to hit it on their backline. Go in, use your first ability, out attack, out attack again, in mid to late game, one Phantom Shuriken plus one out attack will usually drop any enemy backliner like ADC, a marksman, or a mage, or like another assassin for example, to like half HP, or at minimum one third HP just poof, gone, right? And then, then they have a choice to make, right? Then your enemy really have a decision to make. If, you, if they do not kite back for their VIP character, you know, for their backline, you can just ult their sorry ass and get the kill and secure a team fight from, from that point because you kill their you know damage output. If they do Kai back, if they do come back to help their enemy help their ADC, make sure you dash back and do not, do not use your ultimate just yet, okay? Be patient, stay on the side, throw a Phantom Shuriken towards your enemy team and slow them. When your second ability come off cooldown, do the same thing again. Go in on the important character and Phantom Shuriken. If your team does not all die at this point, you can easily go in and clean up most of the time. So if they do though, you know, if, if they if they do end up dying, just back off. You know, save your ultimate to wave clear when your enemy team try to push your turrets. So that's it for our Hayabusa rotation guide. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I look forward to see you in the land of dawn, getting ass kicked by Dave. No, I'm just kidding. But here is the update item build that you guys have requested for Hayabusa. So enjoy, love you guys, and I'll look forward to see you guys next time. Uh, I'm just lying on my on my chair right here, you know, playing the game. And I'm really comfortable. Uh, let's see who got picked in ban here. Uh, Hayabusa. Uh, you gotta pick Hayabusa again. Can we play Hayabusa again? Uh, maybe we can play Hayabusa again. Uh, let's pick Hayabusa. You got Natalia though. So it's just like, it's just, it's very difficult. You know, obviously, uh, you take Karina? No, I'll take Hyabusa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, it's just, like you can see I'm just lying down on my chair right now. I'm, cause, cause I'm, I'm out of energy, you know? Like, you know, I'm just chilling here. Uh, you know, I don't know what's going on. Don't give a crap. I think I'm gonna fall asleep this way. If I close my eyes right now, I'm gonna fall asleep. I'm gonna fall asleep on my butt. I'm gonna fall asleep on my butt, literally. Like, like this is my butt, right? This is my big butt. Oh yeah. Oh. Oh. I'm touching my butt. So I'm right now grabbing my butt. You know, I'm grabbing my butt. So I'm just, I'm just, I, I don't know. I'm just like, I'm just ready to grab my butt, you know, and then, and then go to sleep. I, I don't know. Uh. <laughs>